Poland, September 1939. The Polish army is fighting valiantly to defend its country from a massive German blitzkrieg attack. The Poles lack the armour and aircraft that the Germans are using in devastating combination, but the invasion is by no means a walkover. The Poles fight back with everything in their arsenal, including one of the world's smallest armoured vehicles. When Germany invaded, the Polish army, heavily reliant on horse cavalry, had little armour to speak of. It possessed 170 11-ton, 7TP light tanks, 50 British Vickers, 6-ton tanks, and 67 Renault FT-17 light tanks of World War I vintage. The backbone of the armoured forces were around 700 TKS tankettes. The 2.9-ton TKS is the Polish Army's main armoured vehicle at the time. Based on the interwar British Carden Lloyd tankette, the two-man vehicle comes in two types. Most of the infantry support version that mounts a single machine gun. Powered by a 46-horsepower Fiat engine, the TKS has 8 to 10 mm thick armour that will stop bullets and shrapnel, but not cannon or tank rounds. In order to provide a bit more punch, about 24 TKS tankettes have received a Polish 20mm auto cannon, the WZ-38FK. It can penetrate 25mm of steel armour. These precious vehicles are distributed around the army to stiffen its anti-tank capabilities. Sergeant First Class Edmund Orlik commands one such upgun TKS. A Polish officer cadet when war broke out, Orlik was instead made a senior NCO and assigned to the 71st Armoured Battalion. This unit had eight WZ-34 armoured cars equipped with 37mm guns and machine guns and a company of TKS tankettes. Orlik commands a half-platoon consisting of his own 20mm cannon-armed TKS and two armed only with machine guns. In constant action since the German invasion started on the 1st of September 1939, Orlik first encountered German tanks on the 14th of September, providing fire support for a Polish cavalry attack across the Bazura River. Opposing them were Panzer IIs of the 36th Panzer Regiment, also armed with 20mm cannons. The German weapons were of a lower velocity than Orlik's. In an ambush position on the crest of a hill, Orlik picked off three Panzer IIs, his 20mm cannon easily able to penetrate the German tank's 14mm of armour. Although Orlik scored his kills, the retreat towards Warsaw continued. On the 16th of September, his unit had to destroy its armoured cars as they couldn't ford the Bazura River. Wear and tear, Lack of spares and fuel meant that most of the TKS tankettes were also abandoned two days later. Orlik's half-platoon remained in action, however. On the 18th, he was sent to reconnoitre a road through the Campinos forest. The approach of a German column forced a change in mission. Orlik ordered his two machine-gun-armed TKS back into covering positions, while he selected an ambush position for his 20mm armed tankette. He found the perfect place overlooking a crossroads and waited. A few minutes later, the German column hove into view. It was commanded by 23-year-old 2nd Lieutenant Victor, Air Prince von Ratibor. An Air Prince is basically the eldest son of an hereditary prince, and Victor was the son and heir of Silesian nobleman the Prince of Ratibor, who ironically was opposed to the Nazis. The younger Prince von Ratibor led the German column in the largest tank then in Wehrmacht service, the Panzer IV-B, armed with a short-barreled 75mm gun. Its frontal armour was 30mm thick, meaning that Orlik's 20mm gun would not be able to penetrate. The other two German tanks were Panzer 35Ts. Czech tanks used by the Germans, armed with 37mm guns, with 25mm of frontal armour but both German tank types were vulnerable to flank attacks, where their armour was only 14 to 16 millimetres thick. Sergeant Orlik had the added advantage of concealment. His tankette was so small, Prince von Ratibor and his men couldn't see it. 
Once the leading 35T was side on to Orlik, he opened fire with his cannon. The German tank burst into flames. The following two tanks plunged off the road and began firing blindly in all directions. Orlik now fired at Prince von Ratibor's Panzer IV, initially with no effect, then Orlik emptied an entire magazine into its side. It too burst into flames. The last German tank pulled back, still firing blindly. Moving to a fresh position, the tiny TKS closed within 60 meters in the undergrowth and slammed several rounds into the 35T. Following this, Orlik destroyed some German trucks. Sergeant Orlik left his tankette, pulled out his service pistol and took two German tank crewmen prisoner. And then, incredibly, Sergeant Orlik, covered by his driver, managed to pull the grievously wounded Prince von Ratibor out of the turret of his burning Panzer IV. But the young German officer died a few moments later from his injuries. Sergeant Orlik would continue in action for several more days, and in total knocked out 13 German tanks during the Polish campaign, for which he was awarded the Cross of Valor. He died in 1982 in Poland. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share and also support my channel, PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.